Just give me a second. I need to get my story straight. I don't know the words to the rest of this song. <laughs> Just the meme. <laughs> Welcome to the Nifus Love Podcast. I'm Father Michael. I'm Mom. I'm Mom. Hello. <laughs> we just had a whole baby feeding time, <laughs> burping time. 30 minutes to finish your bottle. <laughs> so we'll see. She's awake. She's usually been asleep. Let me get the hiccups on her. Yeah. <laughs> Try to hold the mic. <laughs> um, but yeah. Life with a baby. I like all the noises. I know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. Oh, no. Not the time to get the hiccups, Elaine. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> well, here we are. Yeah. Oh, another burp. <laughs> oh. Um, today we're talking about... Burnout. burnout. <laughs> they, these hiccups are going to be a problem. I don't know. That's all right. Should, she should stop if I do this for a little bit. Um, have you ever been burnt out? Yeah, I think not uh not in any like really hard dramatic way where it was like I Big need thing. really? I don't know. I'm not challenging you. I'm just like I feel like there's everybody's just... got one or two times where it's like bad. Yeah, there's definitely been a couple bad times. Yeah. I remember one time coming into your office at school and I was just like I don't want a priest today. Oh yeah. <laughs> Cuz that was a combination of a number of things. Yeah. Yeah. And so, yeah, what it was, that was definitely like a particularly rough week. Um, how about you? <laughs> I like it. Um, definitely. I'm trying to think of like a time when it was really, really bad. It's always when I lose sight of like why I'm doing what I'm doing. You yeah. Know? And when I just like, it's easy to get burnt out when you just trudge through and do all of the things. <laughs> I wonder if you could. I'm sure you. Can yes, let's well, come through my headphones. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Okay, let's try this. See if you can move the mic a little closer to you, because yeah. I think yeah. Maybe do this. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. Um, it's times when I like completely. I feel like lose sight of why I'm doing what I'm doing, mm. and I just I feel like it's those times when I go through the motions where all of a sudden I'm just like. Oh my gosh, I'm not like actually taking care of myself or actually thinking about why I'm doing the things that end up burning me out. Yeah. And like don't have good boundaries. Yes. And then you're just like doing it. It's when you feel like it's the times when I've been like, oh, I have to do it all. Like I yeah. am not going to let anyone help me. I have to do all of this myself. Yeah, that's been my experience of times when, yeah, I'm feeling like I it's all on me. Um, and especially I think I'm I don't ask for help. Because maybe it feels like, well, I don't even know how anybody could help me right now. Yeah. And then you just kind of get deeper and deeper into it. And uh, it doesn't end well. Like, yeah, it usually leads to some sort of like, not necessarily like screaming breakdown, but like just kind of being, being overwhelmed. Yeah. yeah. How do you avoid it? Because I feel like most people experience it. So how can we try not to experience it? Yeah. To me, it's... uh it's more than just like a thing to do when you know you realize you're already there it's kind of daily practices of it's like prevention yes it, prevention is important oh uh to like to be realistic with yourself whatever place you wherever you are in life if you're a student if you're uh a parent if you're a priest like whatever it is in your job like you can't do it all yeah. And it's really important to remember that. And because it's the times when we think that, you know, like we have to be self-sufficient and we have to accomplish everything that, yeah, it's going to just weigh us down. Realizing what we can actually do in a day is and that it doesn't have to be it's not going to be perfect and you can't do it all is really important. So, like, mm -hmm. I think living in that space and like some people, maybe if you're a workaholic, could like think that's lazy yeah and, and it's really it's not to be realistic like to to be realistic and do you know work do your best and accomplish your duties or responsibilities but knowing that you can't do everything in the world um that's not being lazy 
Yeah, I feel like that brings up something I forgot about. Like a a big reason why it happens for me sometimes is like so much so much of the time I'm like I know I I might even know I should slow down or like mm-hmm. maybe do something differently, but I get too caught up in what people will think of me. Yeah. Especially I feel like I mean in your work even more than mine, but if you're in any type of ministry, there's like always these oftentimes unrealistic expectations set for you and like this standard that you're held to. And it's good. Like I should be held to a standard of holiness if Mm -hmm. I'm like representing the church in any way. But I think because of that, like, especially with you as a priest, people think you're like in a a superhero sometimes. And like, Oh, father Michael probably never struggles in his faith or like never this, that, or the other, uh, never sin. It's like, people don't think of Mm -hmm. priests as sinning, things like that. Um, and I feel like it could be really easy, even if you know what you're called to and what you're capable of, to get caught up in what other people think of you. And there's times where, like, like between the voices of parents and kids and coworkers and bosses and all of those things, and this is the case with, like, any job, mm-hmm. like, wh- it could just be so easy to be like, okay, I'm going to please everyone now. Like <laughs> yeah. time and like making that the focus instead of making the focus, I'm going to do my job well, I'm going to live my vocation well, mm-hmm. and then lead the rest of the Lord. So th- I think that, br- that brought up a good point for me of like, I get burnt out at the times when I'm too focused on other people and not focused enough on what God is asking of me, yeah. but too focused on what other people are asking of me. Yeah, and and I think that's a good point of like, what is most important like there are obviously things. So I, in my life, there are things I need to do, people to call and respond to, and right. I don't know, papers to sign, uh, <laughs> things like that, uh, taking care of business. But like in the end, what is most important is glorifying God yeah. and living out my vocation. And that doesn't always, that doesn't mean being like productive a hundred percent of the day. Yes, And so like, having time for prayer and time for uh recreation yeah. is part of your vocation it's not yes. it's not a bonus it's uh it's not like a an extra i think maybe when joe was on we talked about rest sort of mm-hmm. and just i i said this then and i think it applies is that rest is not a reward um that it's 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 an essential part of our lives and if we neglect it because we think we we need to be doing something, whatever that is, um, we're going to pay the price. Yeah. And like, it's funny because we do this thing where you're like, I got to go, go, go. And I can't ever stop. But then you're the thing that you want to get done is affected. Yeah. If I don't sleep, I'm not going to be as good of an employee or a wife or a mom or whatever. Like if mm-hmm. I'm not taking care of myself for the sake of taking care of something else, I'm actually going to be worse at that other thing that i'm trying yes. to do like it doesn't it doesn't help you do better god bless you yeah was that <laughs> well, a sneeze that's a little oh. baby sneeze <laughs> <laughs> i think the tough thing with burnout is that it's not just um you know we're gonna get stressed that's normal we're gonna have bad days and that's normal i think when you find yourself in a rut of uh finding no joy or satisfaction in the things that you're doing um and I think particularly like with your job or with a ministry and just feeling like, like you said, going through the motions, um, just doing it cause I have to do it. Um, you can't, uh, sustain that forever. Yeah. Uh, and the temptation can be just to try to push through and like, well, if I just try harder, then things will get better. Right. Uh, but you kind of have to return to like, well, what's, what's going wrong? What am I, How am I looking at this incorrectly? How am I not taking care of myself uh, or having like the right boundaries to make this something I actually can do? Uh, Because like you said, yeah, if if you're joylessly and like without love going through the motions, you're not going to be a great mom, a great campus minister, a great priest, any of those right. things and where's the where's the reliance on god if i'm just constantly like if only i try harder yeah like <laughs> how does that make me a better christian or mm-hmm. like like you're gonna be the best christian in situations like this when you're like okay god i can't anymore like yeah help me out here you know what i mean mm-hmm. um but so often our response is like if only i am better like i must not be trying hard enough yeah it's like we're it takes 
I think a, a great way to avoid burnout is just to like generally and regularly work on the acceptance of the fact that none of us can do it all. Mm -hmm. And none of us can do anything perfectly. And like, I'm, I'm constantly working on accepting that because that's really hard. I want to be able to do everything perfectly. But then when I do in those moments, in those moments that I fail, it could be easier for me to be like, okay, well, I'm a human. Like, because yeah. then I'm not as shocked by it. But if I set the standard for myself of perfection, then I'm going to be wrecked every time I don't reach it. And I'm, yeah. I'm going <laughs> to fail at reaching it all the time. Mm -hmm. And then it's going to, but it's like a lot, it's a lot healthier emotionally to be like, yeah, oh, that's right. I can't do everything. And then kind of having that mindset consistently helps you to accept that in the little moments. And then to not get burnt out because then your response is more acceptance and like, okay, how can I adjust rather than, no, I don't accept that I can't do everything. Mm -hmm. So now I need to just try again to do everything because yeah. I, maybe I failed this time, but I just try a little harder. You know what I mean? Then you're going to be, yeah, constantly beating yourself up. Yeah. Um, And, and I think a, another part of this is comparison, looking at how other people do things or what they can do. And I think that like, knowing your personal limits is really yeah. important and they may be different than other people. Yes. Um, and that's okay. Yeah, that's totally okay. And then un being understanding with other people about their limits, thinking that, well, I can do this. Why can't you? Like I that's can, huge. I can, yeah, I can get to this point. Why can't this other person? Um, yeah. Just having patience with each other to know when somebody says, yeah, I, I'm at the edge of what I'm capable of. Like, that's that's a good sign to like okay like let them have that space yeah and yeah i think it's important to realize like everyone has different there's lots of things that play into that different personalities mm -hmm. different life experiences also like different priorities in life like our priorities are different from each other in yeah. a certain sense mm -hmm. um because of our different vocations yeah or our different jobs even like, this is a good example though because like it's something i've like i've had to learn like even before you had a baby and yeah. even before you were married, yeah. like a priest by nature can give more of his time or should give more of his time than, than somebody as a lay person is an employee of like our school. Yeah. Um, in the sense that you have different things that you should plug into and should be doing um, versus a priest. Not that a priest shouldn't have those other things too. But it's your vocation. Yeah. Whereas like, as much as I love my job and my ministry, it's not my vocation. Mm -hmm. um, you're not going to be as invested in Elena as I am. You yeah. Know? <laughs> yeah. I'm pretty excited about her. I know. Uh -huh. <laughs> She's out. That's good. She was just staring up for a while. <laughs> <laughs> um, no. I, I, yeah. I think that's a great example. And we, we've like talked about that before. Mm -hmm. um, and even just like, yeah, things look so different for me now than they did when I was single, even though like, my job still isn't my vocation and never was like i'm just not able to give to it in the way that i was before i'm able to give to it in the way that i should but mm -hmm. like i'm not staying extra hours anymore or things like that where i might have had more time yeah. and like availability to do that when i didn't have a baby to get home to or a husband to get home mm -hmm. to you know so um I think that trust is you bring up a really good point because it's so easy to exist in our own world. Yeah. Just be like, this is what I can handle. And this is what I think this other person should be doing. So mm -hmm. I'm going to roll with that. But like, you can have like expectations of others in certain contexts. But even then, I feel like the answer is just to like, if it's someone you work with or like someone you have a personal relationship with, the answer isn't to be like, do this it's to say this is what i'm thinking and feeling what are you thinking and feeling and then yeah. to talk and like find a compromise you know like, yeah how can we given the needs of the situation and our own personal needs like how can we find a balance mm -hmm. i feel like that's something we've done and i know i've done with father josh too uh like through work as well like but you're not going to get anywhere if it's just like do this you need to be doing this yeah because i said so that know? feels very much like the mark of a bad boss and I feel like I've I've encountered that different times where someone just like, yeah, get this done without knowing the situation or what's yeah. already going on. And like, yeah, I this isn't a like a work 
relationships podcast but i think I know but with the, it's just so relevant to to our relationship so i feel like that's the exactly yeah, yeah. We, we fall back on but yeah that's what i'm saying is just like that it pulls in it flows into everything that like um knowing how much you can do while like the point of our life isn't to have a job yeah and that can vary like if i ask somebody what do you do that's what the question is like yeah. that's like the one of the first things we ask about somebody and not that it's bad to you know like god gave us work for a reason like we we build each other up we build up the world but um having that awareness of like the priority in my life is to love god and love my neighbor mm -hmm. then everything else kind of has to fit into that and if our busyness of work or school um isn't allowing us to do that we need to rethink something yeah it's like when we talk about prayer and i did something that was really helpful for me when i like was struggling and anytime i do still struggle with like consistent daily prayer like a helpful thing to realize is the answer isn't like okay how can i fit it in it's like if i don't have time to pray which is oftentimes an excuse and like i'll make mm -hmm. that excuse sometimes the answer is not i need to restructure things better the answer is i probably need to get rid of something else in my life yeah and like sometimes avoiding burnout is accepting that like you might need to remove something in your life you might be doing too much yeah um but it's, i see it with our high schoolers uh -huh. so much like it's i feel like it's worse than when i was in high school maybe i just wasn't Absolutely. As involved but I, yeah. I i feel like when i was in high school everyone kind of had their thing but now and maybe it's i don't know what it is but it feels like every kid at our school does everything mm -hmm. does like five sports each <laughs> plus the musical plus band plus something else yeah you know like it, it it literally feels like a lot of them tell me like i don't get home until 11 o'clock every night and that's when i do my homework but for all the ap classes i'm in yeah, yeah. you know and that's not good <laughs> no um gotta sleep yeah <laughs> and, and pray mm -hmm. so i feel like that's an important thing that can be hard to accept and sometimes we want the answer to be like if i just restructure things or if i wake up earlier mm -hmm. um but sometimes the answer might be no like i'm doing too much yeah you know and maybe i have to give up something i enjoy but like to make time for more peace and prayer mm -hmm. and even just like to be able to pour myself into things i am doing more and my yeah. relationships more yeah and to have more peace of mind like that's gonna help yeah to live your life in a place of of peace mm -hmm. matters now in our discussions of like I'm not it's a little bit first world problems what do we like what do we say to somebody who like because of like to take care of themselves and their family is working all the time like how do how do we how does someone like in that situation that. like yeah that they're like they you know have multiple jobs for a reason like not because it's fun um yeah, yeah. When, where like yeah your life can become kind of burnout because of that yeah i think like in those situations like i mean my husband works yeah. two jobs full-time right now and is a full-time grad student so like but the key there is like it's temporary and i yeah. think that's important if it's completely unavoidable then you know we'll talk about that next but like sometimes there's going to be seasons of life where maybe that's necessary um for sure trinity health system is calling me wonder why uh that's okay um oh i have an appointment tomorrow that's why they're reminding you yeah that's very nice um trinity health systems <laughs> did you ever hear that commercial <laughs> no it's from maybe from when i was younger <laughs> that's hilarious system 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 that's how it went she loves it it's a good song it looks like her wrist is bent really weird right now but it's just her oh. hand it's i thought she small. was grabbing at the headphone wire earlier yeah. <laughs> i guess she can't really grab anything <laughs> she can she grabs her fingers oh. sometimes not with these little mitten hands on though <laughs> um what was i saying <laughs> uh oh. yes yeah, seasons of busyness and, yeah, yeah like that's gonna happen you christmas is nuts for you you can't help that easter yeah. is even crazier yeah um just a, that's a small example but and there's definitely some situations that call for needing to like really press on but mm -hmm. like Zach's going to graduate in two years and like, or a year and a half or whatever. And like things will adjust then. And so right now it's like this temporary thing to get to 
an end to where he won't have to do that forever. Yeah, yeah. Um, I but honestly, like if that if there's a situation where someone not where someone's a workaholic, but they like have to work, like yeah. I think you should do everything you can to make it temporary. Yeah, and that might mean working really hard for a shorter amount of time, so that for a longer stretch of time you don't have to do that. But mm-hmm. um, and it's kind of like. Maybe it's not their problem. Maybe it's the, it's society's problem oh, that oh, absolutely. They're, they're forced into that position. Yeah, yeah, for sure. There's so many things that play into that, like different degrees get you different jobs, which get yeah. you different pays, which provide for your specific life in a different way, depending where you live, how many kids you have, all of that. Yeah. So I think it's like no one could sit here and say, like, stop, because sometimes you can't. Mm-hmm. So then in a situation like that, if like you can't remove anything from your life, it's... Yeah. functioning the best that you can given that situation yeah it's it's definitely a cross and yes. so god wants to bring good out of it um yeah and i make like, the most of what what you can do i believe that if that's a situation where it's unavoidable like god supplies more grace for mm. those people mm-hmm. that's why i think when i see someone who goes through a type of suffering i can never fathom i'm like i know they're getting grace that i don't have yeah <laughs> like yeah. to get through that um that's why prayer is important then too yeah and like a smaller example my life looks very different right now than it did four weeks ago and prayer looks very different Mm -hmm. because i'm adjusting to learning how to take care of a newborn and it's like yeah i mean i just took 30 minutes (laughs) to give her her bottle um so like prayer i i looks very different as a parent than i think that than it did before i was a parent Mm -hmm. um but like I know God understands that and yeah. it's about making the most with what you have, but like keeping your, your mindset in a good place of mm-hmm. like, what am I doing this for? And if there's purpose and if it's good purpose and if you're really trying the best you can, like that's all that God asks of you, you know, it's like, keep your, keep your focus in the right place and to do the best you can with what you have mm-hmm. and like, let him do the rest. I was talking to somebody the other day and he was sort of remembering when he was a a new parent and how many masses he went to that he didn't really go to. Right. That he was running around in the back or like trying to comfort a baby and just kind of like feeling like, do I need to go to mass again? I, like, I don't even. Yeah. Like, and just the idea that, you know, sometimes like that's the sacrifice you're making. That's the way that you're loving. Um, and like you said, God understands that. Yeah. Uh, God knows like caring for a child is an essential part of your life and your vocation. Um, and that's going to, you know, affect sitting in mass and yeah. having time that's quiet and that's okay. Yeah. And like God doesn't do with us what we often do with ourselves. Just like, just try harder, <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> you know, be perfect. Yeah. God, God teaches us how to have that, that better self love and better expectation, more realistic expectations of ourselves. Like he mm-hmm. considers our humanity. You yeah. know, doesn't expect us to be like a God. And so doesn't, should we. Doesn't want us to be like a God. Mm-hmm. That defeats the whole purpose of everything. Yeah. Yeah. All right. <laughs> I'll do my best. Okay, thanks. Molly. Yes. How has God loved you lately? How has God loved me lately? Hmm. I, have to, I know, I have to, I've done lots of ways, but I have mm-hmm. to. Wow, I wasn't prepared. Elena smiled at me for the mm. first time a couple days ago. Like with her eyes open, she smiles in her sleep a lot, but she's starting to smile like reactively, yeah, which yeah. is very fun and cute. And so yeah, that was very super special. Cute. Yeah, super cute. Mm-hmm. What about you? Um, for Advent in our parishes, we're celebrating Mass ad Orientum, which nice. means the priest is facing towards the altar and the crucifix, the same direction as the people. It's not the norm in the church, uh, but it's it's an option, and I love it. Yeah. And uh, I just for me personally, because I'm doing it, like, this isn't just because I like it. Right. It's, it's <laughs> to help everybody to kind of refocus for Advent, but it's such a helpful way to really focus in praying the Mass when yeah. you're not feeling like you're uh, presenting to an audience. For sure. Yeah. That's awesome. So that's a gift that we're able to do that. Nice. Mm-hmm. Thank you. As a person, I'm stoked. Welcome. Did you? Did Zach tell you what I told him? Uh, he told me you guys texted about, but I'm not. I don't <laughs> he, know which part. He asked, 
how it went. And then he asked what I preached about. I said, oh, it went great. I preached about how people who don't come to their parish for mass aren't really Catholic. Because <laughs> <No, yeah. laughs> we, we went to the evening mass yeah. this week. I'm so That's sorry. That's okay. I was just joking. Yeah, whatever. I was joking. <laughs> sorry, Zach. It looks like the moon. The balloon right there. Uh, yeah. I'm going to bring my airsoft gun next time. Should... Just in the middle. Pow! No, we should just we should do the podcast taking turns sucking helium out of it and talking in that voice. <laughs> I want to do it right now. <laughs> no, you know it'll happen. It's Matthew will just, uh, with software, make that happen. I know. <laughs> That's true. That's true. Okay. All right. We'll be back. Yep. Bye. Bye.